Before we begin, thank you very much to Master Ben for joining my Patreon campaign. Very appreciated. Thank you so much. Um, it does mean a lot to me. It does keep the channel going. I don't hyperbolize that. I don't like say that to get you to do it. It like literally is the reason I'm able to keep doing this. Thank you guys for everyone willing to contribute. We're actually getting like really close to the Beast Machines mark again, uh, which probably means I need to actually hurry up and get the Beast Wars episode reviews finished. Uh, cause that is, uh, that's, that's bad. That's bad of me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've got 10 more of those to go. And then if we hit 600 and if we get into March and I'm over 600, we'll do, we'll, we'll review beast machines. I'm not looking forward to it, but I'll do it. But that is later. We're talking about now. And now we are talking about GoBots again. Hey, I found another excuse to talk about GoBots on the Transformer channel. So last time we talked about uh, the differences between Transformers and GoBots. And uh, I was playing devil's advocate. Of course, I don't believe GoBots are better than Transformers in the long run, but I will give them acknowledgement they did things differently than Transformers, and some of it was for the better. So I'm going to be fair about that. But now today we are going to be focusing on what is similar, because in the 80s you only had so many cool vehicles to pick from. So to actually create two transforming vehicle toy lines, you're going to have a few things that crossed wires at some point. So that's what we're here to discuss today. The GoBots and the Transformers that shared vehicle modes, and we're going to find out, maybe judge which one is better. I'm not going to keep track of who's going to win or anything because I'll, I'll get in trouble if it goes the wrong way. Uh, but there are some times where, yeah, the GoBot's the more interesting toy with the exact same vehicle. So I think it's fascinating to actually take a look at. So we're going to start with the obvious place and one people think of the most, which is Bumblebee and Bug Bite. Now, for this, I'm trying to keep this as close as possible. There's a lot of GoBots that use very similar model vehicles to Transformers. Like, there's two different uh, Corvette GoBots, but neither one of them is the exact same as Trax. So I'm going to try and stick to just the ones that are the exact same make and model. There might be a few that are a little bit off, uh, like the one we are looking at right now. We're going with Goldbug because that's the more accurate Volkswagen Beetle. But if I were to, say, compare it to Bug Bite, there are a few subtle differences between them. In particular, the side windows, and there's actually a sunroof on this one. So there's a little bit difference between them. Now, toy-wise, yeah, like absolutely, uh, Bug Bite ends up being the more interesting one. Um, I think uh, as you see more of the Super GoBots, you'll find the flaw in those particular toys. But for the most part, yeah, like... Um, uh, Bumblebee's classic, don't get me wrong, but, like, as, like, a transforming robot, you definitely have more going on with Bug Bite. Uh, but that's kind of what we're here to talk about. Which one, like, using the exact same base, uh, let's see how different these things came out. So, like I said, that one's similar, but I can't really determine if they are the exact same vehicle model. The same is kind of true of Trailbreaker and the Toyota Hilux. Um... Uh, so it's uh since the it's the it's the Hilux MR5, but this one has the camper uh, bed to it, so that's a little bit different. Uh, it's very different from the GoBot counterpart, which is Smallfoot. Uh, yeah, so already interesting in that GoBot saw it as a female character, uh, whereas you know Transformers it's a rugged male character. Uh, I think that what's interesting it's such a different vehicle mode profile. Now of course. Uh, there's no camper shell to worry about on Smallfoot, but I love how different they approached it. Whereas, like, you know, they like they're trying to have some like internal robot parts like underneath the trailer, underneath the truck, and use a little bit of shell forming to make it look more unique. Whereas GoBots just kind of folded out the truck to create the robot, so it's it's different, uh, different philosophy. Different design philosophy. I think both of them are decent. I think both of them do fine. I'm not sure there's a winner between the two. Uh, but let's see. Those are like subtle differences. We can go to some that are like a little bit crazier. So Bone Crusher is a Komatsu D155A bulldozer. We're pretty familiar with this one as a Constructicon. However, have you considered Dozer from the GoBots? Who, from what I've looked at, is 
based on the exact same model of bulldozer, though he looks very different from Bone Crusher. Uh, like, the robot mode looks a lot more solid because it's uh, doing different things, obviously. But it's a little bit uh, weird in the in the vehicle mode. It's a very tiny front wedge, for, in for starters. Um, the front section of the vehicle itself looks a little bit different, too. Uh, so it's a little bit weird. So keep in mind, GoBots had to all fit into the exact same size scale with each other. All the robots basically had to be the same height in that in that line. So there's a few that are kind of compromised in the vehicle mode. We'll get to one in particular. But this is kind of like where I find like the differences that are that are interesting to me. Uh, let's move on. How about something a little bit more car based? So Porsche 928S. So it's dead end from the Stunticons. We know this one. We've seen this one plenty of times. Uh, if we want to go to the GoBot side of things, though, we have to look at Hair Fiend, another Super GoBot from the first year. And now you're starting to see where the weirdness of Super GoBots comes from. The first year of the Super GoBots, they all pretty much had the same transformation. And they decided that the windshield of the car was going to be the face of the robot. And everything just kind of folded up and extended out from there. They all have basically the exact same transformation going. So once you play with one, you've kind of played with them all. And at that point, it's just preferential which one you like best. I like Psycho, personally. It's at least, at least more interesting. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, it showed like very different concepts. Very different ways of handling everything. This is what interests me. It's like, it's so different, even though it's using the same vehicle. I think that's cool. Uh, we can go to something a little bit more big scale, even though neither one of these are the right size for it. Let's talk about a space shuttle, a NASA style space shuttle. We see with blast off, we've got, you know, the nose cone forms the arms, the rear becomes the legs. I think the rear having has to become the legs, no matter what you do with it. But for our GoBot counterpart, we have to go to Spacey. And that one definitely has its own thing going on. So again, the rear is the legs, right? And that's where the, you just you're just kind of stuck with the wings there. Uh, but the arms come out the sides, and the nose cone is actually the entire cover for the head. So you have this kind of cone head or hood thing going on. Uh, so slightly different take. They basically had the same robot in mind. It was just a matter of what you did with the nose cone. In Blastoff's case, it became his hands. In this case, it became a hat. So in some situations, there's not a whole lot different you can do. Um, now, I want to—I could have compared this to like Astro Train, who is a very different take on a space shuttle uh, from Space C. But we're actually going to focus on his locomotive mode, which uh, is a JNR class D-51 steam locomotive. Yes, I have to write all of these down because I don't know vehicles and machines very well. And I apologize if I mispronounce a car model, by the way. But for this one, we have to go to Loco, who is very much the same steam engine. It's just very much the same, like... Uh, it's very much the same steam engine. However, we have the opposite problem of Bumblebee and Bugbite, whereas like Bumblebee is hard to compare to Bugbite because he's like that squat penny racer. Now we have this squat little train, and we're trying to compare it to Astro Train. I will say, proportional, proportionally in robot mode, Loco is a lot nicer looking than Astro Train is. He doesn't have that tiny arm syndrome. Uh, obviously, he doesn't have shuttle mode parts hanging off of him either, so that's a little bit of a boon. Uh, but just as a simple train former, like uh, they both got their own weird thing going on. Um, it's 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 weird. It's it's weird. Like yes, that's the same, and that's the same. That's the same. <laughs> one looks like a tiny little Hot Wheel. The other one actually looks like a train. This looks like this no look like this looks like the like the toy train you rode as a kid inside the mall. It looks like one of those, or like the kitty ride out at like a fairground. It looks like that train. It looks it looks like the train that pulls the kids' cars. That's what it looks like. At least by comparison. Ah. So, Sight swipe. Alright, so classic Lamborghini uh Countach LPS five hundred. Uh, very classic vehicle mode. We've seen this one replicated many times in Transformers. 
Uh, for GoBots, we have to go to a character named Spoiler. And the surprise here is that Spoiler's pretty much got the same thing going on. So, obviously, the method is different. I do like how the hood becomes the hands here. So, it's doing a very different transformation scheme. And the legs are flipped over rather than just, like, extended down like Sideswipes. Like, Sideswipe has this, like, extended down legs and where his is a flipped out. So, they're doing different things. But it shocks me that not only are they, they both went with red for the vehicle mode color, they also both went with black for the secondary color. That's a little bit weird. That's just a little bit weird. And you can even like break it down even farther. Like they have the same color on their thighs. You know, it's a bizarre coincidence. Or maybe one ripped off the other. We uh, we don't know because this has all happened back in the 80s. Uh, most of the designers from then uh, wouldn't tell you now, even if they could. Uh, but guess what? It's not the only Lamborghini uh, Countach that's in this list. Because we also have to talk about Breakdown. Uh, we like this vehicle so much, we're going to just keep on making more. So we're gonna, now going to compare Breakdown uh, to another GoBot, which is Pocket. And Pocket, I remember as a kid, as a kid, like I had I, this, I had this at like uh, my great grandmother's house. And I knew it was not a Transformer because it didn't feel right for a Transformer. But in my brain, all I could think of was like, low budget sunstreaker and like and the, technically yeah like tech technically sun, sunstreaker's a lamborghini too like so this is not too far off and the fact that they have like kind of a similar ear thing on the yellow color scheme is like again a little bit weird it's just a, it's another really weird choice and very like it's oddly similar to the point where i'm genuinely wondering if they're doing it intentionally Let's move on to another common vehicle mode for a Transformer, and we're going to talk Blue Streak and the Fair Lady Z, or the Datsun 280Z. Uh, this one, of course, Transformers got to use this vehicle three different times, one of them being race modified. And uh, GoBots, uh, surprisingly, uh, they like their Fair Ladies as well. Um, meet Zemon, which is yet another super GoBot from the first year. The exact same transformation going on. Uh, and, uh, I don't have explanations at this point. Like, I like, uh, yeah, it's the same, same vehicle going on. I like the red, uh, a red Datsun, I don't believe is something we've ever actually had for as many like new characters they come out with you like your silver streaks, your G1 barricade. I don't think we've actually seen a red Datsun in transformers yet, which is a little bit interesting. Um, do you want to talk that? Do you want to talk Fair Lady Z's more? Do you? Do you? So we can go with Streetwise, who is a Nissan Fair Lady 300 ZX. Uh, similar vehicle mode, of course, similar vehicle mode. To go to GoBots, we need to talk about Zigzag, who is also part of a combiner team. Now, because this one forms the leg of a combiner, we give it a little bit of forgiven. <laughs> because it has to have this big old clown shoe thing going on. He looks like he's wearing waders. He looks like he's wearing like big blue waders. Like he's going out like like deep fishing in like you know like you know, like deep in the river or in the swamps. Uh, it's it's a bizarre little figure. I've actually got it at home somewhere. Uh, he's he is like a bizarre little funky one because he has to form a leg of puzzler. Um, now, if we, I, I'm doing this because they're both combiner members. Uh, if I want to be unfair about it, then we can go to Major Mo because GoBots did another Fair Lady, and this one's a little bit more standard in design. Hood is the chest, leg is the rear, flipped out. This is a pretty standard '80s transforming robot. He doesn't look bad. Maybe, maybe a little bit generic in the head. Uh, but, I mean, design-wise, yeah, this is actually a lot closer to Streetwise than the other one was. Uh, which, you know, like, I think it's saying, yeah, <laughs> a little bit closer. A <laughs> little bit closer. So, again, another popular vehicle across all transforming lines. You, so, you had, like, uh, so, like, if you just count all fair ladies the same, you have, like, what, what? Three in Transformers, one in GoBots, and then another one Transformers, and then two more GoBots. So it's like four and three. It's like seven. If you liked your Transforming Fair Ladies, 
you had like seven to pick from in the 80s. So good, good on you. Picked a good car. Vortex. All right, Vortex is a uh, Cayman SH-2 Sea Sprite military helicopter. Uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty familiar with this one. This one is probably one of the more interesting differences between them. I'm going to flip back and forth a few times here. So let's take a look at ZigZag, which is the version they did for GoBots. So you can already notice what's different about them, what's interesting to me about these. So uh, if we take another look, so look back at... Uh, look back at Vortex, so the tail of the of the helicopter becomes the arms, and then it flips out the front section to become his lower legs. If we go back to, uh, f yeah, if we go back to uh, Flip Top, it's the opposite. The front of the, the front becomes the arms, and the tail end becomes the legs. Uh, so they had completely inverse ideas of how to actually handle this as a transforming character, which I think is really interesting. I mean, I mean, like interesting in a way of like, hmm, like in like a like, why did why did two designers come up with two different solutions that are completely backwards from each other? And interesting, even though they came up with the backwards solution, they both just decided that that helicopter blade was just going to sit on his back. So they had that in mind, but everything else is reversed, which is interesting to me. I mean, as interesting as little toy robots can be, anyway. Uh, we're going to go into jets now, and there's so many jets across Transformers in G1 and in GoBots. Uh, they all do kind of their own thing. So Skydive here is a General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon. Pretty cool jet mode. Pretty cool jet mode. Now, this is a, this is a bog standard aerial bot. Arms come out, wings fold back, legs extend, uh, half a vehicle tucks onto back. We pretty much know. Aerial bots are pretty standard in their transformation styles. So let me show you Heat Seeker. Now, we, I think I've done a review of this one on this channel before. It was a Toy Simba review. And Heat Seeker is a brilliant toy. Like, his transformation is unlike anything else I've seen in Transformers or GoBots. It's incredibly original and unique. Even to this day, even after thousands of transforming robots have been produced, I still have not seen Hasbro or even a third party try to produce anything that transforms the way that Heat Seeker does. Brilliant little figure that does things very uniquely. Really, really cool toy. And we're not, uh, and then we have to go to other aerial bots. Fireflight, uh, a McDonnell Douglas F4 Phantom 2. Uh, again, Pretty standard design, pretty much the exact same as all of these smaller aerial bots. His counterpart in the GoBots is Mach 3, which is a little bit more unfortunate. Heatseeker got the bulk of the jet love in this series. Uh, Mach 3, unfortunately, is pretty bog standard. Uh, you see the, the nose cone doesn't flip back all the way to reveal the robot head, and everything else is just arms extend from side. Tail splits apart. Very simple. Very, very simple. Now, GoBots is simple sometimes, but when you go from Heat Seeker to Mach 3, you're going to get a lot of disappointment. So he's not known to be one of the better GoBots. And of course, we're not done with jets. We have one more jet to talk about, and it's probably the most major jet in both franchises, and that is uh, the McDonnell Douglas F 15 Eagle which of course means Starscream. The original Starscream, of course, absolutely classic toy, hampered only by the fact that, yes, it's a very is very much a part-forming figure. Even if you can transform it without taking the wings off, you are still going to have to do a little bit of working with uh, some loose parts, especially like the landing gear, uh, the fists that are separate, etc. Um, and, you know, and just there's a ton of parts on this thing to just peg off uh, in case you need them out of the way. Uh, but then, of course, we have Leader One, the very, you know, the main hero of the entire GoBot franchise. Same vehicle mode, very different way of handling things. He gets rid of the cockpit instead of making it a feature. He handles the wings by putting them uh, on the sides of the legs and folding them back. They both have to deal with the tail fins on the feet. But for the most part, um, you know, Leader One may be a little bit generic looking, but 
comes across as a far more solid looking figure than Starscream, just as a count for like he has no part forming going on here. So maybe not as interesting to transform though. So we'll be fair and point that out. So I could probably go on. Like I said, there are a lot that are kind of close. You know, maybe the year of the vehicle is off. Maybe it's a slight ver different version of the model. But I wanted to throw in as many like one to one comparisons as I could for the sake of this video, because I thought that was what was interesting about it. How different they came out despite coming from the same vehicle. So I hope you are educated today about uh, some old toys that maybe a lot of people aren't as familiar with. Thank you guys for watching this bizarre little idea I had one day. I uh, hope you enjoyed. I hope uh, maybe I can figure out some other way of sneaking some GoBots into this channel uh, without everyone throwing hate in the comments. Uh, they're the competitor, but they lost. So let's just go back and enjoy them for what they were. Until next time. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.